So, run the clock, here we go. Last week I talked a message and I said, when I think about journey, before I think about why people come to journey, I have to first think about what, what do I carry? And so last week I said that I feel that my wife and I and, and, and different leaders in this house, we carry three foundational uh, um, areas of breakthrough. I mentioned spiritual breakthrough, I mentioned um, relational breakthrough, and I also mentioned financial breakthrough. And um, I believe we carry that. I believe if I, if I, if I, as a pastor, I would be lying to you to say that people don't come in those categories. Four categories people always come to me about in any direction. They say they want to deal with family, so there may be relational stuff there, faith, finances, and health. Those are the four areas as a pastor people are always going to come. Faith, God don't feel close. This and that. I struggle in here. Um, family, my wife and I need a little counseling. Or my child having a little rough teenager discretion. Or, you know, you know what? I found out my husband cheated. And I found out my friend don't want to be with me anymore. And all kind of different stuff. And as a pastor, I'm like, okay. They need relational breakthrough, right? And then secondly, uh, thirdly, uh, finances. Man, I need a job. Or, you know, I got money, I got salary, but things don't tend to stay in my pocket. Or um, there's a drought here or this and that. Financial breakthrough they need. And then health. And so Christina's in the church now to give us health breakthrough. So I'm not there yet. <laughs> Christina's gonna, gonna help. She's gonna put the, the last pillar of health. Um, we try and, I'm trying to run, but I don't have a breakthrough in health yet. So I can't speak about health too much. What I can say is that um, your mind projects your body. So if your mind is, is healed and you're, men, you're mentally well, your body is gonna project positive health. I just let, let you know, all right? So if our mind is being renewed, our body is gonna feel at peace and come in full alignment, all right? So I wanna share that. So today I wanna to focus on the two areas that I feel that I wanted to connect with is that spiritual breakthrough and relational breakthrough, all right? So I wanna focus on that. Let me first define what, what breakthrough means to me. And it's just a working definition. Um, and these are two options of it. It says, a sudden, dramatic, and important discovery or development. When there's a breakthrough in medicine, there's a breakthrough in that area. It's a sudden, dramatic, and important discovery of development. Think about it from a faith perspective. When there's a breakthrough in your faith, all of a sudden you believe that God is able. Woo, that's a sudden, dramatic change, right? And then the second definition is an instance of achieving success in a particular sphere, sphere of in, influence or activity. So an instance of achieving success. So where there's been strife, where there's been challenge, and all of a sudden you're successful in that area, that is breakthrough. And so another definition I would put here is, um, when I think about breakthrough, it, in my perspective, it's, it's like breakthrough is a removal of blockages. So when people don't want to thrive or push forward, when they feel like their mountain is bigger than their faith, then we need to remove that, those blockages, so that we can clear the path and take steps and options to be taken to have or to reach our intended goal. So as a minister, as a pastor, as a friend, when, I'm, when people come to me with things, I'm thinking, well, what log is blocking the flow of what God wants to do right now? 70% of the time, I'm going to be real, we in our own way. 70% of the time. The other 25, 30, I mean, probably somebody else, but we give people too much power to impact us. We need to get our power back, and we need to make the decisions for us. And so I believe that when we remove the blockages, we can have a clear path, and in essence, I believe breakthrough, wherever there's breakthrough, there's freedom. What is freedom? Freedom is the ability to make decisions and be creative to create your solutions. When you're free, it's like your mind, your body, and your soul come in alignment to actually reach your intended position or destination. Because you now have the capacity to make decisions, to say no where you've been saying yes, and to say yes where you've been saying no, and come up with a solution that could actually bring that breakthrough. So I believe breakthrough is freedom. So let's talk about spiritual breakthrough, aka faith a little bit. Last week I stated that spiritual breakthrough starts with acceptance. The minute you know that God accepts you now, right now, <laughs> with my jeans, pants, my gray shoes, and my black shirt, He accepts me now. I begin to get breakthrough, right? And because a lot of times we're fighting for people acceptance in life. You want your pastor, I've been in churches where they want a pastor accept, and if the pastor doesn't call them up to preach, they leave eventually. Or they don't get a, a thank you card on their birthday. People don't like them. It's just, you always want people acceptance. But if you're fully accepted by God, 
then people's acceptance is secondary or maybe fourth out there. Knowing that you're fully accepted and known by God is truly amazing. Now God is such a great father. If you're in a messy situation, he loves you in it, but he loves you too much to keep you stuck there. Mm -hmm. So you notice with Jesus, he goes into where people are and he brings them out and he says, come and follow me. He doesn't keep Matthew as a tax collector. He doesn't keep um, Lady Magdalene demon possessed. <laughs> no, he frees them and said, no, now that you're free, steward your freedom. So I tell people this, if you get breakthrough in here, stay in this environment for a little while. So you can get stronger, you can get steps, you can know when you leave this environment, whatever that environment is, you can actually go back there where there may be a little tension, a little challenges, and continue to store that breakthrough. But sometimes people don't listen, and so they actually get breakthrough here and go somewhere else that is not conducive and cultivating that breakthrough. Be it relationship, financial, or spiritual. And the reason why Jesus Christ picked 12 people or people, he said he would do life with them. There's an impartation in relationship. Whether it's good or bad, we all learn from each other. 1 mm -hmm. Corinthians 15 says, do not be fooled, bad company corrupts, good character. Okay. So that means that Pastor Felix has the best intentions, but my access to people, like what Pastor Richard was saying, maybe they don't have the right beliefs, my friends and, and different people, and, and, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, even though I don't believe or start believing like them, eventually there's cross-pollination. And I'm bearing negative fruit in areas I never had before, just because of my environment. Okay. Well, if, I, if you believe in that, then secondly, I also believe that Bad company or <laughs> good company could change bad people. And I don't believe nobody bad. I believe when people know that they're known and they're loved and accepted, they begin to increase in their personal value. And because they're increasing in personal value, they begin to change their decisions. Jesus Christ does it like that. He, he saw the adulterous woman. He's preaching early in the morning, teaching people. They're sipping Starbucks coffee at his feet. And... He's talking and he's teaching, he's a rabbi, he's teaching them. And all of a sudden they threw a woman in front of him that was caught in the very act of adultery. That means she was busy being busy. And then all of a sudden they said, what are you going to do about this? The law says to stone her. What do you say? He writes in the, in, in, in the ground and people perceive that he might have been writing people saying nobody really knows what he wrote. But at the end of it, whatever he wrote, put them, um, sharpen them in their heart and be like, mm, we can't put this guy in a corner. And then he said something like this, if you don't have any fault, are you without sin, throw the first stone. And all of a sudden, from the eldest, because if you live long enough, you realize you've got plenty of faults. <laughs> the Bible says the eldest to the youngest left. And then the woman looks up and be like, yo, homie, I'm naked, but where are the people about to stone me? He's like, I don't know where they're going. He's like, I don't condemn you. Go and sin no more. What are you saying? You're free. Steward your freedom. Find a new place to chill. Find some new friends that are going to be conducive to that environment. Okay. So, also what I found in spiritual breakthrough, the word, the word of God over your life will be tested. Some of you guys probably re receive prophetic words. God's going to do this in your life. God's going to do that. And all of a sudden, and people tell you stuff like, you know, you're a man of God. You're a woman of God. You're operating in purity and, and power and all kind of different stuff. And all of a sudden, you don't feel powerful. You don't feel pure. And you don't feel like those promises are yours anymore. Well, the thing is, guys, is that your word over your life will be tested. You say, Pastor Felix, is this biblical? Yes, it is. We see this in the life of Jesus. The first big test of Jesus was right after the Father says, This is my beloved Son, and whom I'm well pleased. And as Jesus rose out of the water, Matthew um, 3 verse 16, it says, As Jesus rose out of the water, the heavenly realm opened up, the spiritual realm opened up, and he saw the Holy Spirit descending out of heaven and rest upon him in the form of a dove. Then suddenly the voice of the Father shouted out from the sky, This is the Son that I love, and my greatest delight is in him. And then, that, then he went into being tempted for 40 days. So you have the Son of God getting the affirmation from the Father. So if Jesus Christ needed the affirmation from the Father, how much do we need affirmation from leaders in our life and people that we do life with? We're interdependent, we're not independent. And so he's getting this affirmation and then he puts the affirmation to the test. And if you look at the 40 days of temptation, he was attacking his identity. 
Then he comes out of that and he's victorious. And then we see <laughs> at the beginning of something, we see him being tested. That's the beginning. So that's discovery. When you discover who you are, it seems as your life is like, boom, all of a sudden like bombs over Baghdad. Things are just going all over the place. It's because you finally discovered who you are. And now you have an opportunity to push through or to go back into your lack of identity in your cave and be the minimized person that you are and don't achieve nothing. Jesus Christ couldn't do that anymore. He was watching his society for 30 days, learning from their mistakes, seeing the people still spiritually in chains, seeing the people not worshiping the true God the way God called them. And all of a sudden he's like, ah, not today, Bobo. I'm going to set foot. I'm going to get baptized. I'm going to fight my biggest battle with the one who wanted to be like me in the first place. And you notice that Satan couldn't kill Jesus? The Bible says Jesus Christ laid down his life. Guys, you hear. I know we've been through, but you're here. That issue couldn't hold you back. You're here. And so Jesus comes out and he gets through this test. The second we see near the fulfillment of his calling in the Garden of Gethsemane. So what I realize is there, there, there's a big temptation, a big challenge at the beginning. That's discovery. And then there's a big, um, um, big temptation um, at the end, a potential end of an area of your life. So, so if we get tempted to give up and abandon our destiny, we become minimized at the very beginning. So why do you think the enemy wanted to kill Jesus from he was under two years old? All right, let me tell you something. Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem. There were some people called um, wise people. There were actually kings that came and they brought gifts to him. And when they gave gifts to him, Herod who was intimidated because another king has been born, sends a commission to kill every person under two years old in a 12 mile radius of Bethlehem. Okay. Joseph, in a dream, the angel spoke to him, go to Egypt. How did Jesus get to be taken care of? His family, no work in Egypt in a foreign land. The gifts from kings. Yeah. Biblical scholars believe that it's over $4 million dollars of gifts that these kings brought. No, we see three little guys. <laughs> There's more than three. We think there are three because of the three specific gifts that they gave. But you could think you're a king. A caravan of other kings are coming through your nation bearing gifts for another king who's born into your society and kingdom. That's a threat. Yeah. Can't be two kings. So Herod wants to kill him. Couldn't kill him. That the kingdom of God is always previous. Send the angel, go there. He raises a Nazareth. He comes to his call of his destiny and the enemy still can't kill him. The only how he could be defeated is if he agree with the lies of the enemy. The only how you could be defeated is if you agree with the lies of the enemy. So he's at the pinnacle, he's at the climax. He's seen the dead raised. He put eye, you know, the eyes of the blind come back together. He's teaching them spiritual truth. People are being baptized and repentance. And there's a wave of revelation and, 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 and renaissance and reformation happening in his movement in three and a half years. There's this energy that is pulsating through, through Israel and through Jerusalem and to Judea and all those other places. And all of a sudden, it's the climax now. He's bleeding blood in the Garden of Gethsemane. Because all of a sudden, all of the sins of the world, all of the issues of mankind is hard pressed on him. And now he's challenged again by the enemy. And he, we don't see the enemy, but we hear the struggle in Jesus' soul when he says, and after going a little further, he will face down and pray and say, my father, if it is possible that is consistent with your will, let this cup pass from me. No, this is beyond what I can bear. Pastor Richard said, sometimes we press on every side. We struck down, but we're not destroyed. And he's pressed on everything. And all he has to do now is finish it. Yeah. And there's a humanity of him crying out. If there's any other way that we can bring freedom. Ah, no other way. So he goes through it. So I believe some of us, right? We're on this cuffs of things. And, 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 and we, we give spiritual warfare too much influence. It's going to be warfare because you're gaining more territory. Yeah. And the enemy doesn't want that territory to be given up so easily. So there's going to be a little resistance. But press forward. Because just like how God made a way for Jesus 
He didn't even pray. He's, he's a baby. He provided for his family to bring breakthrough for him. He'd bring breakthrough through. So as a disciple, we are followers and, and life lesson learners of Jesus. And we can learn everything pertaining to the life and godliness from him. The reason I mention this is because there are key insights of God giving to us in these areas of breakthrough. It seems like challenges increase when we're about to do something new. Right? You want to come church and give your life to the Lord? Oh man, all of a sudden brunch is cheaper than it used to be. All of a sudden the young man or the young girl that didn't care about you before, all of a sudden up in your business now want to have a relationship with you. It happens. I've been real with you, right? So this giving you the being just a real talk, Felix, today. And it says this, um, it also seems like when I am on the cusp of completing something or gaining an entire territory, there's a temptation to throw in the towel that attempts to peek its little head out to me. So at the end, when you're about to man, come on the cuffs of breakthrough, there's that temptation, man, just ease back up a little bit, Pastor Felix. Don't go after healing again. Somebody passed away. Oh, don't go after pouring your life into people because people not valuing you. Oh, Pastor Felix, nobody in your church. There's only 25 people here. So why are you going up? Why don't we just find another job and just go back into biking? You could at least make six grand a month right now. You got your degree right now, Pastor Felix. You could just go back there. You could watch your podcast, Pastor Felix. You could actually join another church and be on a leader. You don't have to do this, Pastor Felix. That's a real temptation for me. But when it was a greater reality, God, if you could do it in me, yeah. you can do it in there. So when I see people come to my church or my ministry, I don't see one person. I see family. I see nations. I see at least 12 people that you could impact. And if you count, there's about 45 people here, times that by 12. I see over 500 people that are within reach of our influence that we can transform. I see children being raised up with mothers and fathers. I see women falling into their identity and being who God called them to be. I see children having processed conversations with their parents because parents are not available at home to talk with them. I see that in this place. I see business people who are going to create solutions, right? And people are going to pay good money for them and they're going to go and advance the kingdom. I see that in this place. I don't just see somebody coming down from Newlands coming to church. Amen. That's what other people see. I don't count how much people in here. Jesus is here. Amen. So, you can give up if you want. I'm not giving up. Man, I'm not, I'm not everyone else, you know. You guys are not everyone else. You're uniquely and wonderfully made in God. So here's another thing. In, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, I'm close with this. This is what I'm learning too. Alright, no, I need to give you something before that. You say, Pastor Felix, you talked about the beginning, that's discovery. You talked about the end, that's the climax, that's, the, that's when I'm going to be reigning with God and all kind of different stuff and it comes to full fruition and everything. But what about the middle? Pastor Felix, what do I do in the middle? Because the middle, whoo, is a challenging too, Pastor Felix. I want to give you two things that are going to help you in the middle. I call this the two-piece combo. You ever been to KFC? Yeah. Two-piece combo. Yeah, Friday night. Listen, I love my Jamaican heritage. Friday night, it's like they, they won the lottery and they go get the KFC. What KFC makes on a Friday night, they make more in a week. So two-piece combo. You say, Pastor Felix, what is the two-piece and what's the combo? It's testimony and promise. Listen. I got a testimony. When I'm tempted and I have challenges and God bring me through, I got a testimony. Amen. When I hear Richard talk about God comforting him through the death of his father, I got testimony. And so I'm holding on to testimonies because when I'm tested, I need the money. Yeah. <laughs> I need the money on that test. Because when you have personal breakthrough, if I pull on to that, it becomes corporate breakthrough. So I don't have to go through it to learn. I just got to listen and receive that impartation. Shanda, well, how did you learn with that business deal? Um, Tamisha. Tamisha, what did you learn exploring entrepreneurship? You know, and Lisa, what did you learn through transitions of different jobs? Dorota, how did you learn when you got promoted? Which will you learn from your father, losing your father? Well, there's a synergy that I get because I'm honoring what's in front of me. And wherever I honor, I receive an inheritance. That's a testimony. Amen. Guys, people. Walk in darkness because fathers and mothers stop sharing testimony. 
People walk in darkness because fathers and mothers don't share testimony. I can't force anybody to have a relationship with Christ. I can't force our children to have a relationship with Christ. But I can share my testimony. And when they're going through tough, they know it's possible. They know it's possible to be pure and to be powerful. They know it's possible to forgive offense. They know it's possible to go back to school and learn. They know it's possible to save and have financial breakthrough. They know it's possible to forgive. Even if the person don't even know they're offended. They know it's possible because they watched it and they got testimony. You want to leave people um, your will when you pass away? Don't leave them your will. Leave them your testimony. You say, Pastor Felix, I'm supposed to provide for my generation, seven generations, a wise man leaves uh, an inheritance for his children. children. Yeah, that's not just wealth, though, you know. That's your testimony. Yeah. What's your testimony when life gets tough and Darren and Denise on the prayer closet praying it up? It happens. I'd rather be, be honest with you. One time with Dorothy and I, it's been real. We, 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 our, our, our life was coming full force together. Because even though we had covenant relationship, we were learning to become one and powerful together. That take time. Still taking time. And patience. And a lot of love. I love you, baby. But what happened was, we found ourselves discussing matters of the heart privately in another suite of our home. And one day she told me, don't do that. Because she said, Felix, these kids need to know we're real people. And we go through real issues. And we can conquer it together. And I, so if I make a boo-boo, I correct my boo-boo in front of my children and my wife. Because I wanted to know that a real man takes ownership, good or bad. And I want her to take the same thing of ownership. And I want my children to see that, hey, if something bothering you, bring it out of darkness, bring it into light, because there might be something bigger for you, but not bigger than your family. And my kids need to know that there's power in unity. Amen. So, get a testimony. Amen. The next thing you gotta do is, who are you looking for, Miss Ellen? Dorothy. All right, love you, baby. See the test there, she'll get the money now. <laughs> get a testimony. The next thing you need is a promise. Hurry up. Pick him up quick. The hoe is about to bust. <laughs> Not my boy, man. I love Micah. Two Micahs today, right? Yeah. What? Double portion in the house? <laughs> oh, man. All right, so here's the thing. We need a promise. What has God said he will do? He says, all things work together for the good of those that love him and call according to his purpose. What does that mean? If something not working out good right now, that means God not finish. If it don't look good, that means God not finish. You have a testimony, it's possible. You have a promise, you combine those, now you're gonna have victory. Here's the last scripture I'm gonna share with you now. First Corinthians 10 verse 13 says this, when all experience, we all experience times of testing, which is normal for every human being. Everybody say, I'm normal. I'm normal. <laughs> I'm normal, Denise, you're normal. <laughs> It's normal, which is normal for every human being, but God will be faithful. Who say God is faithful? God is faithful. He will screen and filter the severity and nature and timing of every test or trial you face so that you can bear it. Mm. Yeah. Say, I can bear it. I can bear it. Hallelujah. And each test, say, is an opportunity. Everybody say, opportunity. opportunity. Now, let me be honest with you. Sometimes I come to church and it's a test right before I get in church. And I have an opportunity to submit my ways and my understanding to God. So God, you're faithful, and I'm going to take care of that. Might it be a personal matter or a family matter, I'm going to take care of that later on. But right now, I'm going to worship you. Amen. And I guarantee you, 80%, I don't even got to take care of the personal matter afterwards. Because I come into his presence, and I humble myself, and I worship. All of a sudden, my heart releases that person, it releases me. And it says, I am normal, I am human. Thank you, Nicolette, for an extra clap. <laughs> I am human. And my test is an opportunity. It's an opportunity to trust Him more, the Bible says. For along with every trial, God has provided for you a way of escape. Woo! Everybody say escape. escape. I'm about to break through the room right now. I'm about to escape. So when you get tests, it's an opportunity to see what God is bringing to your way for that solution as a way of escape. Not, escape not being run from it. You know. Escape is so that that test doesn't no longer become a temptation. Doesn't mean I'm running from it. It's like, ah, oh, I see you. It's an opportunity, and I'm normal, and you're doing all things in my good to work it out for my favor. But God, you know what? That little test reveals that there's something in my heart that I need to fix. Yeah. So I'm going to go up higher. 
This is what another an NLT says it this way. The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you're tempted, He will show you a way out that you can endure. Woo! Anybody been tempted? Don't raise your hand. I've been tempted. Temptation is not about a purity thing all the time. And temptation sometimes is a destiny thing. How many of you guys overcome sexual stuff already? You already overcome that. Overcome relational stuff. You already overcome that. It's a destiny thing that I'm talking about today. Because it, it's just throwing the towel. Throw in the towel over the promises. Throw in the towel over your purpose. No, no, no. God is saying, that's a test. And there's been some people that have been through it. And if you don't have it about it personally, read um, Hebrews 13 or 11, I think, the Hall of Faith. When they talk about Barak, and they talk about Moses, and they talk about, you said Abraham knew that his body was good as dead. And Sarah, Sarah dead too. They laugh at God. And then the Bible says, when Jesus Christ writes it, when Hebrews, and the writer of Hebrews read it, he says, and Sarah had faith. But if you read in Genesis, some of she never had faith. She laughed at the angel of the Lord. She laughed. <laughs> You know all I am? You, know, you got to tell God all your facts. <laughs> God knows all you are. And he says, listen, he will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you're tempted, he will show you a way out. And this is what I, I highlight here. It's common. And I know it doesn't feel like it, it is that way, guys. But someone has already gone through it. And have gone victory over what you're currently going through. Find them. The reason I have so much hope, guys, is because I've been through a lot. I'm going to be 33 in, in, in eight weeks, or I think so. And I've been through a lot. Things that, man, I don't want about to go through. But I'm not going to look at that as a negative thing. I look at that as an opportunity to yeah. grow and to learn. Because there's so much more people that are going through the thing that I've been through. And when they see me, they don't, one guy saw me by the post office one day. I don't even know him personally. I know who he is, but I don't know him personally. He said, I believe in God, my brother. When I see you. Mm. What people say when they see you? Mm. <laughs> Listen, you are advancing, you're not retreating. The kingdom of God suffer violent and the violent take it by force. You are a billionaire in the spirit. You better act like a billionaire in the natural. You better know that when you show up to the table, there's a victory at the table. There's counsel at the table. There's wisdom at the table. There's a solution at the table. Because God is in you and He's also with you. Last thing, look for the escape. Guys, I can't set myself up to fail. Look for the escape. The Bible says when Nehemiah was building the wall, two of his enemies said, Nehemiah, come down. We want to have a conversation with you. Nehemiah got his shotgun. I don't know how shotgun. He had his sword and he got his hammer and he's building the wall. And you know what Nehemiah said? I can't come down right now, bro. They were in a valley called Oh No. When the enemy tempting you, he said, Come down, leave that good. Leave it, Darren. Leave your wife to come have a drink. You just look back and be like, Oh No. <laughs> and you just say, You know what? I'm doing a great work for the Lord. That's what Nehemiah say. I'm doing a great work for the Lord. Amen. It might not look great to you, it might not look great to my friend. It might not look great to my pastor. It might not look great to my family members. But I'm doing a great work for the Lord because there's a breach in this wall. And whatever I build within these walls, if they're not protected, it's going to be stolen. Yeah. So then may I say, guys, we got to build back these walls. Yeah. What took 75 years to build a quarter of the wall? I think it was like 50 days or a little over that. Nehemiah built the walls and he wasn't a builder. Nehemiah was a cup bearer. God can call you to things to do that you're not qualified to do, my people. Amen. But you're willing, you're able, yeah. and you're available. Amen. I live by this. When I first got saved, I live by this. God doesn't care about your ability. He cares about your availability. Yeah. Yes. And when you prove your dependability, He'll increase your capability. Mm -hmm. I'm not working with people that are gifted. I'm working with people that are faithful. Yeah. Because we got pushed through. To be faithful to your wife, D, for a long time, you got pushed through. Because now every morning you wake up, you're like, I happily married. Just be real. Yeah. I live by faith, not by sight. I cultivate. This is a woman of God. Denise, God has brought Denise in my life. God has brought Dorothy in my life. God has brought um, Teresa in my life. God has brought Sarah in my life. And we cultivate that. And all of a sudden, mm. you see, when we do the things we do, when we feel good, even when we don't feel good, we'll live longer. 
So if my wife, if I, when I think all of my positive emotions to her, and I respond to her positively, even when I don't feel it, I'm cultivating it. And God is saying sometimes, I go, brother, Richard's are close to this. Brother Richard says, sometimes we press. Sometimes we're broken. It's God, man, when is going to stop? And God is saying, listen, if you give up now, you're going to not leave that right legacy. If you move now, you're not going to have that right legacy. I'm working in you that when the people see you, they're going to say, I believe in God. Amen. Don't come down from the wall that you're protecting. Build that wall. So that people from afar can see, wow, what is so important within the walls? You see, guys, when you build a wall of praise, when you build a wall of worship, when you build a wall of generosity, when you build a wall of love around you, even when the enemy crashes, the wall is so strong, he can't even touch you. He can't come into the holies of holies where you are because you're worshiping. So the Bible says, God descends on the praises of his people. So what does the enemy do? He sits on the complaints. <laughs> I about to wrap up, but I'm preaching again. Sorry. Let <laughs> me finish up with this. If the Bible says he enthrones himself on the praises of his people, he sets up a throne when we worship him. Father, we thank you. Yeah. You are good. You're magnificent. And you know what? We don't have to wait till everything good to worship him. It takes yeah. faith to worship him when nothing good. Because that's a sacrifice. Yeah. I bring a sacrifice of praise. It's a sacrifice. So many of you guys are here saying, Felix, I didn't want to come to church today. That's a sacrifice, and that's valuable to God. You know, when we get to heaven, we wouldn't be able to do that to God. Because God got everything covered. So guys, when, let's just stop complaining. Let's be praiseworthy. Let's worship. And let's give God thanks. So I hope this message ministers to you. I hope it bless you guys. Spiritual breakthrough starts with acceptance. Relational breakthrough starts with knowing that people have been through it before you. And now you have a testimony. And now you have a promise. That's a two-piece combo. And if you don't have one, find someone that has one so that you can cultivate the faith. You know? Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you.